When buying a new laptop in early 2001, you had a choice between one of these and one of these. That's about as stark of a difference in styling between a Mac and a PC as you'll ever see. So I think it's clear which one wins the beauty contest, but today we're not going to look at the Mac. Instead, we're going to take a look at this Windows ME laptop from HP. So this is a rather depressingly gray and utilitarian HP laptop. But I do like these little rubber protectors on the corners and this very secure latch to open the screen. It's a Pavilion N5295 and I like how it still has original stickers on it. Nobody ever took them off. Advertised features are four programmable one-touch buttons access the internet and applications. Touchpad buttons activate the pad and enable scrolling. So that must be a rather crappy touchpad if the number one feature they advertise is the ability to turn it off. I'm rather disappointed that this one doesn't have the track point or whatever HP would have called it. It just has the touchpad, but it does have a rather nice keyboard. It's not quite up to ThinkPad quality, but it's not bad. And also, LCD status panel makes playing DVDs and CDs easy. That's right here on the front panel. It's a little backlit LCD for uh, showing your status when you're playing CDs. See there, I can turn it on, and the computer's not even turned on yet. So I think this is one of these laptops where you can actually play a CD without needing to turn on the computer. It has its own independent power switch. Next is Polk Audio stereo speakers for brilliant sound. Get great 3D performance and CDRW DVD combo drive. And on this side it has the Intel Pentium 3 sticker which is has raised lettering. That's nice. Not so nice is that Although it advertises both Windows 2000 Professional and Windows ME, this one has Windows ME. I know some people have very strong feelings about Windows ME. Windows Millennium? Oh no! Get it away! Eek! Ugh! Gewalt! But in my experience, there's nothing terribly wrong with it. It's just mediocre and mildly disappointing. I think they should have put an H on the end and called it Windows Meh because that pretty much sums it up. But the thing I really like about it is this 15 inch 4x3 aspect ratio LCD panel with a matte finish so it's not all reflective. For comparison there's a more modern laptop with a 15 and a half inch 16x9 aspect ratio widescreen LCD and you can see how much taller the 15 inch 4x3 aspect ratio is in comparison. Here's a closer look at the front panel. Like I mentioned, we get the button to turn on the independently controlled CD player. There's the headphone jack. This button selects what is displayed on the LCD. There's the date. There's the time. Battery percentage remaining. Track number and time on the CD. We get track skip backwards play and pause, stop and eject, track skip forwards, and volume up and down. So without the computer even turned on, I'm going to try to put in a CD and play it. Popped open the tray so I can put in my disc. Close it. There it shows track one. Hit play. And it's playing. I must admit I'm not blown away by these Polk audio speakers. They're very mid-range heavy and rather distorted when you turn up the volume. One disappointment is that you can't do fast forward or rewind. As soon as you press the button it just skips to the next track. So every time you turned around it was me, you were at the end. 
And this thing not only has that built-in CD DVD drive, it also has a built-in floppy drive. So that's very handy. Don't have too many laptops which have a floppy drive. And then next to that are two PC card slots. So you can add a compact flash card reader and a wireless network card. And on the back, this thing has enough ports to satisfy a semen. Of course we get the power input, PS2 keyboard or mouse. You may be able to use one of those Y adapters to use both at the same time. 9-pin serial port, there's the parallel printer port, VGA output, and not only that, but also an infrared data transmitter and receiver, composite video output, and two USB ports. Unfortunately, there are only USB 1.1. And strangely, on the back is a microphone input. And on this side, we get the aforementioned DVD-ROM and CD-RW drive. So it can burn CDs, but it can only read DVDs, which was fairly common at the time. And next to that is a 56K fax modem and an Ethernet port. On the bottom, we get the removable battery, which is still good despite being 20 years old. I was playing those CDs using this battery. So you can remove that. Inside that is the Windows ME product key. Under this trapdoor is the RAM. And under this trapdoor is the mini PCI Ethernet and modem card. And this may just look like advertising on the bottom, and it is, but the point is you can remove it and then take out this card here, put in your business card or whatever other identifying information you want to put in there, and then that tells anybody who sees it who owns this machine. And yes, if you want, you can have that Windows ME product key. I doubt Microsoft cares about it anymore. I think that's a production date, 010416, which would be April 16th, 2001. So here we go of turning it on. I'll go into setup first. And it's keeping the correct time and date, which is good. There you can see the 1.44 slash 1.25 megabyte 3.5 inch floppy drive. The 1.25 megabyte part of it was used by the NEC PC98 Japanese home computer. So presumably this drive would be compatible with those disks. 20 gigabyte internal hard disk. 256 megs of RAM. And here you can actually turn off that front panel LCD status panel. And you can change the format of the date and time that's shown on it. But that's about it for the options and setup that are of interest. So I'll just start up Windows. It's a Pentium 3 850. I guess it's shy about being Windows ME, so I just briefly flashed the splash screen there. And now we're into Windows. I don't know who Dave is, but he never said a password. And now we're into the original HP installation of Windows ME. There it is, Microsoft Windows ME, or Windows ME, as they wanted you to say. Genuine Intel Pentium 3 processor, 256 megabytes of RAM. And that sticker advertised great 3D performance, and here it is, the S3 Savage IX with MV. And there you can see it has support for a CRT, the built-in LCD, and a TV connected to the composite output. Other settings there, and that's about it. The native resolution of the LCD panel is 1024 by 768. Some of the exciting new features of Windows Me included the first version of Windows Movie Maker and also the first implementation of System Restore. So here we go, we can restore our computer to an earlier time. Let's see what times are available. We have a system checkpoint that was created earlier today. And I don't think I've used this thing anytime recently. Yeah, the last time was in August 2021. 
so I won't go back that far but that's the system restore and Windows Me. It was also the first version of Windows which could play a DVD without needing a special MPEG decoder board so I'll pop in a DVD now and see what happens. Give it a second and there we have a custom looking media player program. Warning, playback performance will depend on processor speed and system configuration. Mediamatics DVD player. Well, it is playing. Kind of choppy though. Let me see, can I do full screen? By the way, if you see any stripes or moray patterns on the screen, that's just a camera artifact. The LCD panel on this is perfectly sharp and clear. The mouse cursor isn't going away though. Oh, there it is. Well, that's working fine. Maybe you can just about hear that cooling fan which started running when I was playing all that video. The sound chip powering those Polk audio speakers is an ESS Allegro PCI which provides Sound Blaster Pro emulation for DOS games, although the quality of its FM synthesis MIDI support leaves a lot to be desired. Thankfully, in Windows, you get to enjoy far superior Roland GS Wavetable MIDI. I want to see how good that great 3D performance they advertised on the sticker is, so I installed a period correct benchmark, 3D Mark 2001 Second Edition. So now I'll run the benchmark and see how it turns out. So the result is 453 3D marks. I found a forum post from back in 2001 of someone who bought a new Toshiba laptop back then with a Pentium 3 850, the same CPU as this laptop, but they had an NVIDIA GeForce 2 Go graphics chip in that, and they got a 3D Mark 2001 score of 1189. So even for its time, compared to other similar laptops, the 3D performance of this model is very lackluster. It would not make a good late 90s, early 2000s classic PC gaming laptop. This machine was probably more oriented towards office applications and browsing the web and other basic stuff like that. Not for gaming. I now have the composite video output connected to my 20 inch CRT television. 640 by 480 is the highest resolution you can use and have any hope of it being legible. But back in 2001 when you needed to make a presentation and the easiest thing to do it on was a regular TV, this was certainly a usable solution. For example, a typical PowerPoint presentation is going to be perfectly readable on this kind of display as long as you use large enough text. And when you're done with your work you can use it to watch movies on your TV. I miss how good the speakers sound in most CRT TVs compared to typical flat panel TVs. 
So that's about it for this HP Pavilion Windows ME laptop from 2001. It was definitely not a high-end machine for its time, either in CPU power or gaming performance. But I like all the features it has. The built-in floppy drive and DVD drive. The ability to play CDs without even turning it on. And this composite video output for connecting it to a TV. Alright, we're going to end this video doing what all of you like to do when your little plane lands. Hey! Let me tell you something. I don't get around round of applause whenever I do my job. Yeah, me neither. Guess I'm in the wrong field. I'm in the wrong business. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Have a nice flight. Please use the exits on both sides of the aircraft. I'm using my two fingers because I'm a flight attendant. Right. Got it. Goodbye. Bye-bye.